Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by seismic waves and specifically by P waves and S waves. You should then be able to describe how seismic waves provide evidence about the internal structure of the Earth. And all of this is for triple physics students only. OK, so in this video we're looking at how scientists have worked out the internal structure of the Earth. We're going to start by looking at the internal structure, which I'm showing you here. The outside of the Earth is the solid crust. The crust is very thin, with a maximum depth of around 50 kilometers. Under the crust we have the mantle, and the mantle is a solid. Now I should point out that parts of the upper mantle can flow very, very slowly, but we still consider the mantle to be a solid. We then have the outer core, which is a liquid, and then the inner core, which is a solid. Now you need to understand that there's no way for scientists to directly observe the interior of the Earth. Even the deepest mines only go a few kilometers into the crust. So the question is, how do scientists know that the interior of the Earth has got this structure? Well, the answer is because of earthquakes. So we're going to look at that now. An earthquake happens due to a sudden movement between the tectonic plates in the Earth's crust. This causes seismic waves, which carry energy away from the earthquake. These seismic waves then pass through the Earth, and they can be detected by seismometers in different countries. The patterns of these waves give us information about the interior of the Earth. Now, there are two main types of seismic waves. These are called P waves and S waves. P waves are longitudinal waves, and they can pass through both solids and liquids. P waves travel faster than S waves. S waves are transverse waves. And the way to learn that is that the word transverse contains the letter S. S waves can only travel through solids. So imagine that an earthquake is taking place here. Seismometers on the Earth's surface can now detect the seismic waves after they've passed through the Earth. So we're going to look at the patterns of P and S waves. I'm showing you the S waves here. You'll notice that seismic waves travel in curved paths and that's due to density changes in the Earth. As you can see, we can detect S waves anywhere over this part of the Earth's surface. However, there are large parts of the Earth where no S waves can be detected, and this is called the S wave shadow zone. Now, this is due to the fact that S waves cannot pass through a liquid, and this told scientists that the Earth must contain a liquid core. This shows a pattern of P waves. We can detect P waves anywhere over these parts of the Earth's surface. However, once again, there are large parts of the Earth where P waves cannot be detected. These are called P wave shadow zones, and I'm showing them here. The P wave shadow zones are due to the fact that P waves travel faster in solids than in liquids. This means that the P waves slow down as they enter the liquid outer core. This causes them to refract. In other words, change direction. They also refract when they leave the outer core. Once again, this confirms that the outer core is a liquid. Now, sometimes faint P waves can be detected in the P wave shadow zone, and that was used by scientists to show that the Earth also contains a solid inner core. Scientists have measured seismic waves from thousands of earthquakes. They've used these to work out the thickness of the crust and mantle, and also the outer and inner cores. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on seismic waves in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.